The Presidents of the Republic of Texas. There are four presidents of the Republic of Texas. The first one is Sam Houston, or what I like to call Sam Houston 1.0, which, yeah, there's going to be a 2.0. <laughs> so Sam Houston is the first president of the Republic of Texas. He serves from 1836 to 1838 and really is at this time period considered, um, you know, a war hero when Texas fought against Mexico during the Texas Revolution which if we go back a little bit in history, Texas was actually part of Mexico as a state. And there were some issues culturally, economically, socially that were not, um, you know, really working. There were lots of things that clash um, religion and language and, and views on slavery. And so uh, Texas decided to declare its independence from Mexico and Sam Houston was the leader of the Texas Army and really one of the guys who, you know, saw the war all the way from the beginning to the end. Um, so naturally, he becomes the first president. The Texas Constitution, when it was written, did not allow for presidents to serve multiple um, terms back to back. So. Um, the second president comes in, his name is Mirabeau Lamar, and he serves from 1838 to 1841, a really difficult time for the Republic of Texas, um, as it's kind of in this, you know, stage of, of independence, but yet, you know, really struggling. The people of Texas reelected Sam Houston. So he is actually the third president. Uh, again, this is who I refer to as Sam Houston 2.0. And he serves from 1841 to 1844. And then we've got the fourth and final president of the Republic of Texas, Anson Jones. And he serves from 1844 until 1846. And at the end of his presidential term is when Texas becomes a state annexed into the United States. All right, so let's dive a little bit deeper into President Sam Houston 1.0. Some things that really stand out about his presidency is number one, debt. There's a ton of debt from the war, from the fact that, um, you know, there's no income the way it used to be. Life is different after the war and after independence, and there's lots of money owed. Um, there's also taxes as a way to pay for that debt, yet not a lot of Texans have a, a really decent way of making a living. So even though you tax citizens at a higher rate, doesn't necessarily mean they have the means to pay that. Another conversation that President Sam Houston brings to the table during his presidency is annexation. In other words, he knew Texas was on borrowed time as a country. There was too many things against it, and he knew it was just a matter of time for the United States to say, hey, come and join us. And he was all for that. Another very um, important conversation to have around President Sam Houston 1.0 is the very apparent tensions that a lot of Anglos had with Native Americans. And uh, Sam Houston had spent some time as a child living amongst the Cherokees and amongst other Native groups and was actually, you know, on a more of a peace treaty path with the Natives. But that wasn't always the case for um, the Texas Congress, right? The Republic of Texas Congress and other politicians or even civilians. So always tensions with the Native Americans at the forefront of, of a country because at any time that can mean war. Um, that can be, you know, uh, safety um, issues with military, right? How do you protect your citizens? Do you include Native Americans? Uh, we do know that the, the Texas Constitution excluded them. They did not include them as citizens of Texas. All right, then we have President Mirabeau Lamar, number two. Let's just add on more debt. <laughs> Let's just keep adding this debt. It keeps accumulating. Um, Lamar takes on a bit of a more... Um, heavy-handed military approach. He 
spends more money on the Texas Rangers, really organizes them to really remove the Native Americans. Um, he moves towards trying to create a, a U.S. Uh, I'm sorry, Texas Navy to be in the waters, to always be on guard and prepared for Mexico, um, but not really the money for that, right? So more debt, more debt. And as far as education, Lamar did set aside certain lands and really speak to the future of the Republic of Texas in stating that, you know, if there, this country is to have a future, it must be in educating its citizens. And so he was really trying to create schools, like real schools. They're, they weren't, they didn't exist at that time. Um, and so he knew that the, you know, progress needed to be made through education. Yet again, there's no money for that, right? So the re-election of President Sam Houston 2.0 um, as a third president really is focused on reducing spending, right? He does, a, he, he does away with some of those Navy things. He does away with some of the military, kind of reduces the Texas Rangers, really tries to cut spending from the government still pushing for annexation, still wanting and knowing that the United States needs to take in Texas in order for it to be successful. Um, and then again, at the forefront as well, you know, trying to renegotiate these conversations with the Native Americans, um, even though most of the treaties that were discussed at this time were never actually upheld um, or followed through. And lots of times there were many battles and fights um, and massacres that came out um, throughout the entire time of the Republic of Texas between the natives um, and the Texans. And it just never really, uh, the natives never really feeling welcomed or um, seen as citizens and always, you know, this, this taking over of land and this uh, culture clash really just being um, the story of the Republic of Texas, regardless of the president. Well, then that leads us to this last kind of era, this fourth president, um, President Anson Jones. And really his main focus is at that point after Sam Houston, you know, did as much as he could, he realizes this is it, like we are a sinking ship. And so he really pushes and negotiates with Congress to get Texas to become um, a state in the union. And um, we do know that that happens because Texas um, gets all of that done by 1846, uh, 10 years of being its own independent country. Thank you for watching Mama Mata History for Today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode as I focused on the four presidents of the Republic of Texas. Kind of crazy to think that Texas was its own country. Well, I mean, if you live here. We kind of talk about it all the time. Uh, even though it was only 10 years and four presidents, but technically only three, the same guy got elected twice. Hey, whatever. I'm glad you learned something today about the Republic of Texas. Stay tuned to learn more. And as always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. 